as you can see here, we have four different photos of the iterations of the drawings that I made. Uh, one being the one that has the most detail. Uh, that was the one that you saw in the demo where I uh, did the time lapse of the piece, uh, the main still life. Uh, and then from that, I made uh, three other quicker versions of that. Uh, so I can use it as a base to continue my designs. Again, uh, if you're taking, if you're not doing one that's uh, close to realism, you might want to just use it as a, as a guide for yourself. And then uh, from that, then you make some a couple of additions to your drawings, or uh, do that all those type of additions while you're in the painting stage. So uh, from right from here on out, I'm going to be doing a couple uh, alterations both at the drawing stage and at the painting stage. So a couple of things you will need for uh, these last few uh, things is your paint brushes. Uh, again, they might be in like a bag like this, or you have them just assembled wherever they might be. Your acrylic paints. Uh, again, another pencil uh, if you're making any color changes. Uh, a thing of water uh, so you can dry off your brushes. Again, these are acrylic, uh, so you can just use uh, water and paper towel to dry it off. So you can go between different colors, so you're not uh, changing. If you're going from a darker color to a lighter color, you're not can, like making that darker color or that lighter color uh, not what it's supposed to be. So if say I was going from uh, like dark blue to yellow, uh, I want to make sure I'm using yellow for the banana instead of turning the banana green if I don't clean off my brush. So definitely make sure you have a, a thing of water so you can clean up your brush in between changing. Uh, colors or changing objects and you have different brushes here as well so if you're filling in larger areas you can use uh, the sponge brush uh, or maybe like filling in the background and then there's a couple various different thicknesses so there's a couple that are a little bit wider uh, for larger areas as well as some that are very uh, fine like thinner uh, with fewer brush uh, bristles so those are for a lot more closer detail again those might be more um, for like if there's a glare or a like, really subtle color change or a shadow, we're trying to get into like really intricate areas. Like I wouldn't want to use a large brush stroke on trying to create these laces. I would want to use a thin brush to do that. So for uh, for the rest of the video here, it's gonna be a bit of a montage, just going over adaptations to the drawings as well as painting them back and forth between the different stages. Uh, for this first one here, I am going to do this as. Um, uh, surrealism. I'm also going to be uh, looking to do one uh, as abstract, like sort of in the style of Mark Rothko, uh, as well as one in uh, pop art in the style of Roy Lichtenstein. So we'll have a couple different uh, adaptations to those. Uh, so we'll see how they all look during the montage.
for the second part, uh, what I did was I have a, another drawing, but what I went over with my design is went over with the eraser to make it a little bit more faded so that my paints, uh, since they are semi-transparent, uh, when I go to do my, this is going to be the abstract uh, version, I want them to sort of uh, be more the paint rather than the actual form, since it does not have to be a literal uh, interpretation of the objects since it is abstract. So I went over with the eraser and sort of softened up my pencil marks uh, so that it's, instead of being seeing the pencil underneath, that I can just go and uh, make the forms themselves. So uh, what I'm going to be using is my paint uh, and my paint brushes, my various different ones. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use the large uh, sponge one as well, just to block in a couple areas. Uh, a couple of things that we'll be looking for for this movement uh, for abstract. I'm going to be sort of referencing uh, Mark Rothko. Uh, he does a lot of like block painting, so it's like blocks of color, uh, as well as uh, just a couple of just various interpretations of color in certain areas. Okay. Uh, also, you want to use your your uh, cup of water uh, to help uh, clean your brushes in between your paints.
for this art movement, the one I'm going to be choosing to inspire this piece is going to be pop art. And so for that, I'm going to be looking at different artists like um, Andy Warhol and Roy Lichtenstein. So I'm going to be using uh, techniques like Roy Lichtenstein would use. So bold uh, colors in uh, any of the primary, so red, yellow, and blue. And then also be looking for adding the bend, uh, bend dot printing uh, techniques, so little tiny dots uh, for any areas that are not those colors. And then uh, bold black areas. Uh, and so for that, I'll be using uh, black paint as well as a Sharpie. And the way to get those little tiny, like perfect circles on the back of my, uh, on the areas of I want to color that are not uh, red, yellow, or blue, uh, I'm going to use actually use the back side of my pen, uh, paintbrush to use these little tiny uh, perfect spots to make the uh, the dots for my non-primary color areas. Uh, it works really well, and you don't have to worry about trying to make a perfect circle with the flat brushes. So if that's the way you would approach it, I would suggest using that uh, for your technique. And then uh, again, you'll just see the whole process um, going through all these different steps. So primaries are going to be blocked in colors, then um, dots using the back side of my paintbrush, uh, and then going over with black paint uh, to trim out some of the areas, as, going well, as well as going over with uh, a black Sharpie too.